to Grace's room. So I think this is probably my most requested video ever. I've been getting requests to do this ever since I started my Grace's World channel. And that is to show you guys the process of making a Grace's World video. I'm sure most of you guys do know, although some of you might not know, I have a second channel called Grace's World that I started when I was six years old. And it is a collection of stories that centers around Barbie and her family. These videos take nearly a week to produce from start to finish. So I always laugh when I see comments saying, can you upload more than two videos within a week? Because that is almost impossible for me to do. So today, what I'm gonna be doing is taking you guys through the process of making a Grace's World video. And the first step is to write a story. So I write my scripts on Microsoft OneNote and usually I write them on my laptop or an iPad. Obviously before I start writing the story, I need an idea first. And I think I mentioned this before, but usually I'll get my ideas from discussions with my family, from stuff that happens to me in real life, or from the comments. You guys have some great ideas. Usually I'll dedicate my Sunday to writing the script. It will take me about like three to five hours. I'll probably have like a lot of breaks in between that as well. Uh, the main characters that each story usually focuses on is either like Barbie, the twins, Chelsea, or Tommy. So each week I usually like to alternate between those characters. This week it's about Barbie. So once I have my idea, it's then time to write the script. So as you can see, this is this week's video. And the first thing that I do is I list all the characters that are going to be included in the video. And then I'll work on one scene at a time. So this is the car scene, for example, or I have the front door here and even the kitchen. And then when I want a character to say something, the first thing I'll do is I'll write their name in brackets. So here's Barbie. And then I'll just type out their line. There we go. And then I'll just Continue writing the script until I'm all done. And once I'm finished, I'll get my parents to read the script and they might make some corrections, suggestions, or they'll fix up any mistakes. And then it's ready to record. So obviously to record the story, I'm going to need some equipment. Here it all is. Uh, the first thing I have here, this is the recording device. For those of you that are curious, it's called Zoom H6. Um, which basically just records all the audio. I have the microphone here that I speak into, the audio cable that connects the microphone to the recording device. I have what they call a boomstick here, which just holds the microphone in place. And then I have this foam cover that I put on top of the microphone and this just helps cut out any unwanted noise. Okay, the equipment is all set up. I have my microphone here and it is connected to the audio device, which is ready to record. So usually I'll get my dad to hold up the microphone while I record the voices, because obviously I can't do that myself. So you're probably wondering, what are you doing in James's room? Well, after a lot of trial and error, we have found that James's room is the quietest room in the house. It has little road noise and little distractions. However, we still do get planes flying over the sky and dogs barking in the yard and children screaming and stuff like that. And it can be very, very annoying when you try to record lines because usually I have to wait for like the plane to pass over or um, I have to re-record lines all the time until it quietens down. Now that I'm all set up, it's time to record. I will record one character at a time. I do this just because it helps me maintain the character's tone and their voice. Uh, I know in the past I used to do just scene by scene, so I'd go from like Barbie to Ken to like Raquel, and the voice just wouldn't be consistent, so I just do it one at a time. Um, so for example, this might be Barbie. All right, everyone, in you go. Ah, uh, you stay there, Tommy. You've ruined my day. I had a special day planned, and you... And this might be Tommy. What did I do? But they had nowhere else to go. So it usually takes about half an hour to 45 minutes to record a script, depending on how many planes go overhead. <laughs> and then it's time to edit. So I'm in the study now, and it's time to set out the voices in their correct order using the editing program. 
So we use Final Cut Pro to edit our videos and I think I've mentioned this many times before but my dad does most of the editing for these videos. However, during this part, I usually like to sit with him to help him organize the scenes and voices. So the voice recordings have been transferred into Final Cut Pro. You can see all the characters' voices listed here. Annabelle has the first line in the story, so we'll drag her voice down into the project. All right, Tommy, we get it. You're excited about daycare. Tommy's got the second line in the story, so we'll drag him down next. It's going to be so cool. Maybe I'll make some new friends. And Isabel has the third line. How come Annabelle and I didn't go to daycare? I'll continue doing that and work through the entire story and when it's finished, I basically have the foundation of the video. What? Closed for repairs? What do you mean? Apparently all the rain last night damaged the daycare centre. Now that the voices are organised, it's time to set out the scenes for the video. I use a green screen to film my videos, so that means I can place the characters wherever I like. However, this means that I need to find images to use as backgrounds. I use my house as Barbie's home, so I took a bunch of photos of each room in my house from a bunch of different angles, and so now I have to decide which of those I'm going to use in the video. So for this scene, I want Barbie in the kitchen, so I need to find a picture of the kitchen bench. And then for this section where Tommy's with his little friend, I'm going to need a photo of the other side of the kitchen bench. Or for example, if I want to show Barbie and the kids in the car, I'll add a picture of the car. So I'll continue doing this for the entire video and this is what it will look like. Oh, well this isn't so bad. See mummy, no trouble at all. Now it's time to get the dolls ready. Okay, Ken is all dressed now. Uh, I've dressed all the kids that are in the video. So I just need to dress Barbie now. Um, this cupboard here is where we keep all of the characters and their outfits in this drawer up here. This is where I keep all of like the reoccurring main characters. So I'll just grab Barbie. And in this drawer here, we keep all of the characters' outfits. Um, I know it's a little bit messy at the moment. I think I need to think of a better system. But we just keep them in like these Ziploc bags. Some characters need multiple bags because they have so many clothes. Like Barbie has a separate bag for her skirts, tops, and jackets and everything. I think I might dress her in a skirt and jacket this week. And then this big drawer down there is where we keep like one-off characters. It's very messy, so I'm not going to show you guys that. <laughs> Okay, Barbie is all dressed now. I think I have the most fun dressing Barbie because like her outfits are a little bit more like trendier and she has a lot of options. But now that the dolls are all dressed, it's time to start filming. So this is probably the most important part of filming my videos and that is recording the dolls in front of the green screen. And like I said before, the benefit of the green screen is that I can place the characters wherever I like. Um, I can make them bigger or smaller. There's just a lot of flexibility. However, this does mean that the dolls can, like, can never wear anything that's green, otherwise they'll just disappear in editing. So in some situations where they have to wear something green, we use this blue screen over there which just works the same way as a green screen. Okay, so there's a little bit of equipment involved in making this video, or in recording the dolls. Um, one of the most important things is lighting. It's really important that I have good lighting in my videos, otherwise the dolls might appear a little bit too dark or too light. Um, and also it just kind of affects the final product. So these two lights here light up the green screen. It's really important that the green screen has good lighting um, because otherwise it won't work as well during editing. And then these lights here, oh, <laughs> um, they just help light up the characters. There's just one more light here as well that we use to light up the dolls. Okay, so this is the camera. Um, and the, if for those of you that are interested, this is the Canon C200. Um, I know it kind of looks a little bit big and scary, uh, but there's like only two buttons on this entire thing that I use. This one here to, to turn it on. 
and then it's the record button down there. And the last piece of equipment is just this monitor here that we use because, um, because sometimes like this tiny monitor here can be a little bit hard to see. And so when I'm trying to like adjust the, ca the character, like their placement and stuff, it just makes it easy to see and also just helps me make sure that the camera is in focus. Okay, let's start filming. So before I start filming, I like to record the scene that I'm working with onto a phone and this just helps me work out where the character is in a scene, where they should be positioned, where they should be looking, or if they have any lines or if they're speaking. So in this scene, Barbie is in the kitchen, um, standing behind the kitchen bench, looking at the kids in the living room. So I'm just going to get her position, just make sure she's in the center of the screen. Since she's looking into the living room, she probably should be tilted a little bit downwards. Okay, uh, you might, if you've watched any of my Grace's little videos before, you'll know that when a character speaks, usually I give them just like a little wiggle, just so you guys know who's like speaking in a scene. Okay, and then once I'm all set up, it's time to start recording. So you can probably see why this process takes so long. Usually it's a lot of back and forth between editing and filming, especially if I make mistakes. So this is usually what takes up most of my week. Um, so a question that I always have been getting is, how do you film a character's feet without getting your hand in the shot? And the answer to that is the green screen glove. So this can be really helpful, especially if I want to show the character's feet or if I want to move them around, because I can just Move them around freely without getting my hand in the shot. Uh, okay, now back to editing. So I said before that the filming is probably the most important part of this process. However, the editing is definitely the most time consuming part of this process. It can take a lot of time to uh, correctly position the characters in a scene, make sure they're sized correctly and adds like some special effects and it can get a little bit technical at times. So that's why I let my dad do most of it. <laughs> um, so once all of the footage is imported into Final Cut Pro, it's time to start positioning the characters into the scenes. So we'll work with the kitchen scene again. We'll just bring Barbie into the project. And this is where the magic of green screen happens. Using a special tool, which in Final Cut Pro is called a Kia, I can then remove all of the green in the footage with Barbie and just leave Barbie on her own. Sometimes in a scene, a character needs to be placed behind an object. So in this case, Barbie needs to be behind the kitchen bench. So what we'll do is we'll open up Photoshop, cut the kitchen bench out, and then place that back into Final Cut Pro. And now Barbie is behind the kitchen bench. Now all I need to do is position and size Barbie so that she looks realistic on the screen. So we have to continue doing this process for every character in every little scene. So you can probably see why it is such a time consuming process and why none of my videos are usually longer than 10 minutes. So once that is all finished, my family um, usually watches the video and so we can spot any like little mistakes and fix them up. But once that's all done, the video is ready to be uploaded to YouTube for you guys to watch. So that is how I make my Grace and Build videos. It can be a bit of a time consuming process, but I do enjoy it and I hope to for some time yet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it answers any questions that you guys might've had about the making of my Grace's World videos. Don't forget to check out my Instagram at Grace's World Official and I'll see you guys next time on Grace's Room. Bye for now.